Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at persisting active storage attachments between pages. Now we've covered persisting between pages before with the uh, data turbo permanent tag, but here we're going to be applying it to videos. And the reason why this is nice is let's say we have a video like this one right here. Uh, it's a tutorial that I recorded a couple days ago. Uh, we can hopefully skip around to some point where uh, I'm working or whatever. Let's say I'm following along with this on this website and then I realize that there's something on the page that I want to see. So I click on the page and you can see that this uh, continues to persist across these pages. This is really good if you want to have like a picture in picture player uh, where you have like the video in the bottom right, sort of like the ads do, but maybe not as obnoxious as advertisements. Maybe it's just a video you're watching or you have like a podcast that you want to persist across your entire website, something like that. Now, the only thing I would say here is just because the Rails aspects of this are really easy to persist, if you do have a podcast player, like the one I've covered on the channel before, that's JavaScript based, that JavaScript can fail uh, and it can be really hard to work around it. So in some cases, the library you use can be a limitation here. So if you run into some problems, don't be surprised if it ends up being the library you're using and not necessarily the framework. Because as you can see here, I mean, this is really easy to set up. I'm still set to this time in the player. I haven't had to store this in the database or anything. This is just happening because this frame is being told to persist. So let's go ahead and let's create this real fast. And uh, to do this, we're just gonna do a Rails new video. And I'm gonna go ahead and CD into it and run a code dot. Now, if you can believe it, it's actually more work, I believe, to set up the entire video aspect of this than it is to persist the video across pages uh, because we have to do all of the active storage stuff. So to do the active storage stuff, we'll just come in here and we'll say we need to Rails GA scaffold. We can do a post with a title and a body of type text. Go ahead and run a Rails DB colon migrate command. Uh, at this point, we can then come in and let's do our Rails active underscore storage colon install as well. And then we can do another DB colon migrate to migrate our database. Uh, we can come over to our VS code real quick. In our VS code, let me hit control plus a couple times. Uh, we want to come into our app, our models, and our post.rb. In our post.rb, we want to say something like this has one attached video. We can then come into our app, our controllers, and our post controller. In our post controller, we want to scroll down to the bottom, do a comma, and say this needs a video. We've now done our post and our post controller. We can come into our views, our posts, and our post form. In our post form, we want to be able to attach a video, so we'll copy these divs. We'll change the body here to video. And we'll change this body to video as well. We then also want to change this to a file field from a text field. We can then come into our post partial. In our post partial, we want to include like another video block or something, right? So we'll do something like a closing p tag. And then we'll say uh, post.video if uh, video uh, or post.video.attached question mark. This check will make sure we don't run into errors if we don't have this post uh, video attached. So this will give us access to this as like uh, as just the post as a video, but we want a uh, video player. So we're gonna do something like a video tag for this post.video. Uh, and for this, we're also gonna need to do a URL for the post.video. And now we have this URL. This URL gets fed into the video tag. So the video tag knows which URL for which video it's playing. And then this should work. The only other thing I'm gonna do in here is after the URL, I'm gonna include a width of 300 just so that it doesn't take up the full screen because this can get pretty obnoxious. So I'm gonna go ahead and run a Rails S now. And I'm gonna to go to localhost port 3000 slash posts. And here I'll do a new post with a test and a case for the title and body. I'll choose a file. If you don't have a video file, you can just download something like OBS, click record for a couple seconds. Your OBS will probably look something like this. Just click record right here, stop recording, and then go into like your videos folder and then it'll give you a decent video file to mess around with if that's what you wanna do. But chances are, if you're watching this, you probably already want to use like a video file or something. I'm gonna grab this one from the other day again. Go ahead and click this and click create post. This will take a second because this is like a one gig file. Uh, but now I have this video player. You can see there's no controls here because the video tag by default is incredibly cringe. So let's go ahead and after the width, let's do a controls colon true, which will cause the controls to be visible. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn down the volume, press play. 
and hopefully you can see that this is now working, right? Now, if I go back to our post though, you'll see it refreshes. So now we wanna do that persistence. The persistence is gonna involve setting up a turbo frame tag once again. I'm gonna do a turbo frame tag for this video. Uh, do, and then down here we can do an end block. And we'll see why this isn't gonna work in a second here, uh, but this will at least give us something to work with. We'll come over here, we'll refresh, we'll click play again. Uh, come over to like 401 or whatever, and then we'll go to show this post, and you'll see this doesn't persist. So the persistence itself, we have to do something uh, along the lines of after the name of the tag, do a data, and then inside of this data, we want to do a uh, turbo underscore permanent is set to true. And this will now cause this to hopefully persist. If I come over here to 334, I click back, and you can see this is now persisting. But we have a different problem now. If I come in here and I do a new tag and I do a test two and a case two, uh, and then I choose a file and I grab another file. I'm gonna grab this small video here, click create post, go back. Uh, now you can see we have this video in both of these tags. <laughs> so that's kind of not ideal. We've now replaced every instance of a video on the page with the last video we've uploaded. Why is that? Well, it's because when we went to this page, like I can come in here, click show this post, uh, it is persisting the last instance uh, of, of this tag on the page because they're all set to have a tag of video. So we come in here we grab this uh, thing right here. Let me scroll in a bit so you can read this. Uh, we can hopefully see this first one has a div with an ID of post and it has three P tags. And the third P tag, we have a data frame with a ID of video. And you're gonna notice that's gonna be the same issue down here. This one's also gonna have an ID of video. So the way that we ideally wanna deal with this is we wanna give each of these their own unique ID. And there's a couple ways to do this. You can give it a DOM ID and then set this to be the DOM ID of this post. So you can say something like DOM ID of post and then go ahead and save this and refresh. But now you're gonna run into a different error, uh, which is if I come in here, um, we have these set to a DOM ID of the post, but the post is the same thing as the ID for the entire partial. So we obviously don't want this to just say post, uh, but we can't like convert this to, you know, like say video underscore two or whatever, because it's attached to the model. But well, we, what we can actually do is leverage something that we've done before for like our chat message system or like the turbo streams, which is to turn this into an array. We can add this as an array, and instead of having di like the uh, DOM ID for the post, we can do something like uh, an array where we have the DOM ID for the post and a video. So we'll save this, we can come over here and refresh. This will now fix our persistence issue. So if I press play on this one, come over here to four minutes, come here and click back, you can see this one's still working. Uh, but if we come in here, we can see this has a post underscore one underscore video, which means it's inherently getting this extra underscore right here. So don't be tempted to put this underscore here like I've probably done in the past. Uh, it is smart enough to figure out that anything inside of this comma separated uh, array needs to have that uh, underscore appended to it. Now, the only other thing we really have to test here is what happens if we have two videos playing at the same time. Well, you can see if we click on this page, the other frame doesn't exist there, so we don't have to worry about that. So if you have multiple things playing, you don't have to worry about the like all of them just creating this awful cacophony of, of noise that you're just dealing with as you're navigating your website. You just click on the one you're interested in and then you're good to go, which shouldn't really be an issue, but sometimes you know, a user might do that. They might play 20 videos and then click on a page and you don't want that to necessarily persist. And that's where having these independent IDs tends to alleviate that issue. But yeah, this is also totally possible with like a audio tag if you wanna go that route instead of a video tag. And then you have these, these audio tags for your podcast, which is gonna work the same way. This is playing right now. I click on show post and this is still persisting. So hopefully this is, you know, sort of what you're looking for, and hopefully this will allow you to build the applications you're, you're trying to that have audio or video in them. But yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and hopefully I will see you in the next one.